Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. That's how y'all was feeling yesterday when y'all ain't get the motherfucking big, 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 big show. Y'all was like, no. No. He did not do that to us. And I'm going to tell you. I was in Callen's house. They were making a big dinner. My wife, my family, his family. And they all convinced me. They said, Joe, could you take a day off for us? Kenya, Africa, what's up, baby? Africa, mama, Africa. And they, and, and, and they was like, please. I said, but the fans, they're waiting. They said, Joe, please, Joe. They said, take a day off. I said, but the fans, they, it's 8 o'clock. They got to tune in. Like, And, uh, yeah, somebody said you betrayed us. Yeah, yeah, I sold out. And I ate the good food Chef Melissa did. And chill with the family. It was, it was, uh, I realized I'm slightly, shout out to Cincinnati, uh, slightly addicted to the shit. Cause it's like, it's um, almost like it was with, uh, with Joros. Uh, shout out to Dre, executive producer of the show. Shout out to Azariah Milan, Smitty on the Beats, 808 Ray, and of course, a very special brother who I love very much. I don't know if y'all know him. That's Shaheem Reed. Don't get jealous that he's here with me. Do not get jealous that he's here with me because everybody want him with him, but you just can't have him like that. So, you know, it's, it's you know, he is uh, the Walter Cronkite, the Howard Cosell, uh, the Barbara Walters of rap journalism. Uh, shout out. Because on this show, all we do is big up the positive. Shout out my brother, Sean Poe, who went from being in jail for 10 years to making it to the House of Representatives in Belize. Yeah. Come on, bro. Like, I mean, like, yo, I mean, there's nothing bigger than that shit. Like, is. It's unbelievable, uh, a story like that. I went to see the man locked up. And when I went to see Sean, he was on a much different mentality. He had just allegedly shot up the club and uh, alleged. And I went in Rikers Island. This is Rikers Island. And I went to visit plenty of people in Rikers Island. But I went to Rikers Island and the man was sitting there with an R&B star sitting on his lap in the middle of the jail. And they was cooking special shit, soul food. I had never experienced this in Rikers Island. And um, for a man to just convert and change his whole perspective in life, uh, salute to that man and salute to Belize for looking past the stereotypes. And know that when people fall and they fail, uh, those are actually only lessons. Shout out to the man, Sean Poe. COVID is very real. 129,000 cases yesterday, 1,400 deaths. Uh, they would have you, the president would have you believe. Uh, that it doesn't exist, but people are dying. People are dying. So please, I love you. Take care of yourself. Today I had a discussion with family and they were talking about, oh, you know, uh, it, it, uh, they, they, they opened up the Soho house and they opened up this special club where people are really watching what they do. I said, look, all I know, all I know is whatever we've been doing, we've been straight. Thank God. Let's keep doing it. Let's not, let's not go there. Uh, Dre is forcing me 
I'm working on this deluxe Family Ties album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's forcing me. Nah, nah. There's no way. Hey, Go, Jay, let's say the truth. Got, no, no. Love, 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 Cheyenne. Love, love, love. Cheyenne. Yeah, Cheyenne, but you love that drive, right? Late the night, drive, I put you in drive. Out. It ain't too late Is this for the it. first time we actually talked about Family Ties on your show? This is the wow. first time we talk about Family Ties. Look at Nori. I'm at the Soho house. That's why I'm not with you, Nori. This is the only guy. Thank God. God bless you. It's the only brother, my friend, I got that's been in every hood, every country, every party, every soul house, every club. And thank God he is COVID free. But when I tell you the Nori, he won't sit his ass down. Jesus. Piece of rock. What's up, baby? And so tonight. I have a guest I've been chasing for several months. And I couldn't find him. And now I know why. Because the man don't exist on Instagram. And the man doesn't exist on Instagram. And that's why. Yo, Nori, you stupid, man. I love you, my brother. Yo, Nori, when I tell you I love you so much, yo, Fleazy, up NYC, up NYC, if you don't know, we have businesses in the hood where we are training future leaders to own their own businesses that work in Up NYC. Uh, the 22nd, we're giving out thousands, yes, not hundreds, thousands of turkeys for the less fortunate. Up NYC, 207th Dykeman, 158th and Broadway. Uh, yes, um... We're doing that. Uh, shout out to the schools in the neighborhood who hit us up and said, hey, our kids can't come to school because of COVID, but they don't have computers. And so we donated a bunch of iPads to the schools around our community. And this ain't to brag, but, you know, we have plenty of people who own businesses in our community that don't give up shit. So just know we for the people at all times. Um, yeah, spitting, cracking, all that. Nah, that's that's the DM. You got to hit the DM for that, B. New artists, tag a new artist. Get in the DM. Invest in yourself. Very important. Uh, let me see if my brother's here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> With you, what's popping with your options? I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set it off by saying I'm gonna get to it. Right? Usually, rappers come up here talking about how Fat Joe saved their life, right? Like in the physical sense. <laughs> I want to tell the people, tell the people how you saved my life. Okay? Whoa. I don't know if you remember that. We was at some shit in Vegas, and I. I was catching the creepy feelings this is around the big East Coast, West Coast time. I don't know if you remember that. And they was looking at me crazy. And you came up to me and he said, yo, Joe, did you peep how these guys are, are, are squaring you up? And <laughs> I looked and I said, yeah, because, you know, I had previous beef with them. But I was, I, I thought, you know, L.A. wasn't going to be. And I'm going to tell it because it's like 20 years ago, but you gave me a bag. <laughs> and that bag had the biggest gun in the fucking history, man. You slipped so me. I reloaded. 
Oh my God. I think I believe it was a tech nine or something. I felt like Conan the Barbarian. And then that thank point. God nothing ever went down, but that day, it wasn't. It wasn't. We had we had we had the soldiers all throughout parking lot door A thing. It was it was it was nothing going down. Not no no no. We we they don't know the decades we go back in like the nineties. Everybody had everybody back because we all was on the roads together, going in and out of towns all over, and it was just so crazy. We had relatives from the West Coast, from the Midwest, from down south. That that was that we known and it's like our connect is y'all connect. Like we ain't never had to send none of our homies home in no bags ever. Thank God. You know, you talking about tour. I heard a lot of stories about Dana, which is Queen Latifah. Latifah. I heard she used to be scrapping on tour with other chicks. Like she used to give it up like a dude out there. Do Hold you on. Hold on. I can only give facts. I can only give facts. I never seen Latifah mop up a female. It was all dudes. Oh my God! Bum, bum. Jesus Christ! Two in a quitter. Two Yo, in a quitter. He was fucking dudes up. Listen, let's talk. Ask the OG Ice T how we all got out this club one time. As soon as it popped off, Latifah opened the hole like the line of the Giants. Mm. Bum, bum. Knocked out cold. Dun, oh dun, dun, dun. Breaking news. Real nigga alert. Let me tell you something. I ain't going to lie to you. You know what Latifah did to me in here? I'm in Cool and Dre's studio. <laughs> he was working on an album. One day she was drunk. And she pulled out a knife and she chased me around the studio <laughs> for no reason. I swear to God. Buck my 50 for nothing. Buck 50 for nothing. Yo. <laughs> Yo, Latifah chased me. Queen Latifah chased me around the studio with a knife. She was drunk for no reason. I love her. I worship her. I'm like, Latifah, why? She why? Was, she, she was just she was just showing you that she got stashes. Yeah, yeah. She was like, yo, Joey, don't fuck with me, man. Nobody. I'm like, yo, La, I love you. Why are you chasing me with a knife? You got to oh. understand, Puerto Ricans are the greatest slashers in the world, damn it. Ah! Buck fifty no, captains no, over there. Buck no, fifty no, capos. You no, gotta you, you gotta see them with the goddamn shit so they know. You know I have Alibaba. I have machetes and everything. Yo, she told me that shit. She was like, "Yo, you Puerto Ricans think you good with knives, nigga?" <laughs> <laughs> Around the whole studio, I'm like, "Yo, live, what's up?" Ooh, laughing. You know, I love I love Latifa. Yo, Trash man, going back to uh, so like. You guys are one of the original crossover groups, but thank God because it paid your bills. But I never looked at you as a crossover, uh, sellout, a, 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 a mainstream. I always, I was there when we was putting up the OPP uh, stickers. stickers. Yeah, the um, grind. But you know what? I had to fight real hard. I think one thing. After OPP, you know the label Tommy Boy, they thinking they thinking business. So they want us to keep throwing out them anthems, them, them, them catchy hook type things. I'm like, we ain't doing, we can't do that. We gotta hit them with a different type of hit. We gotta show them. And they was fighting with me and fighting it with me. I'm like, yo, we gotta come with ghetto bastard. They gave me every excuse. They like, nah, we can't do that. Uh, Ghetto Bastard, the name is too. We said, well, we'll call it everything's going to be all right. That's in the hook. <laughs> Bone. Yo, trust you me. Thought, I feel like you guys were hip hop parade. Ho, oh, hey. Yo, trust I watched you rip down an arena one time with your fingertips. That part. And you turn your back to the crowd that still was going. And the shit, you put your foot in every rapper's ass that night. Cause uh. it was like you turned around and you knew where it was going. And you was like, like, and then it looked like light work. It looked like yeah. So, was, I mean, what does a, that feel like to make music that impacts in that way? I mean, you know, stop playing. We from the same ever. You, we, the, where the last time I seen your stinking ass, I think it was in Detroit. Shout out to my family out there, trick, tricking all. Was me, Naughty, 
Fat Joe and Lil' Kim last year. Am I lying? No, that was incredible, too. People don't understand hits when you got three of us going back to back and, and uh, all the way up. It's an amazing. I almost dislocated my shoulders on your show. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Chuck, because I say people like me, Khaled, I feel like Naughty by Nature invented the anthem. Meaning, like, the, the everything's going to be all right. The OPP, yeah, you know. That's the Uptown old Anthem. That's Ain't that's you the from the Bronx? Win, win, win. Boom, 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 boom. Then the Juice soundtrack, that was telling them, hold on, these OPP cats, they ain't lollipop. I told, I told Dre that. I told Dre that was the Juice soundtrack. Now, let's go to Juice, right? Mm -hmm. um, that was your acting debut? Very, very first, first acting ever. Except acting, acting like I wasn't carrying them drugs and police robot. That was the only other acting. <laughs> you feel me? And them straps. But yeah, the first time. And the, and the funny thing is, me and Pac, we had met on the road. We was both roadies. We was on tour with Digital Underground, Public Enemy. It was Queen Latifah. Yo, so we met there from that on. We had a bond. I had went and read for the movie because Latifah said, listen, you're going to be here. You're going to do this rap thing, but you're going to get into more. You're going to read for this movie. I said, I don't know how to read. She said, you're going to act like you know how to read. Just go up in here and read for this. So I read for Bishop, the role Bishop, but I ain't know what, what I, you know, I'm reading like uh, Riverside and, uh, yeah. So, I, you know, I knew, but I went when Pac read, and I thought he was fighting in there when he was reading for it. Riverside, and I'm telling you, and it's a stand or it's not. I'm like, run, run up to the door like, yo, yo, he come out, you all right? He was like, yeah, I'm ready for that. So I was like, homie, you got that. <laughs> you had me convinced. So he pulled me in the movie, and he had the lead. So the ill shit was, it was his, he had one whole hotel room. It was him in the main room, and it was Mo Prime and Lover, uh, uh, it was, it was, it was stretched from the live squad. It was like all of it. He had all this. He's like, I'm gonna get you in this movie. So they got me in the movie and I was with the Puerto Rican gang. So they said, Tretch, why are you was with the Puerto Rican gang? So I said, listen, we is from Uptown. I was Dominican. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, me a funny, man. I was Dominican, even, man. Even the movie we did, Empire, you was with the Puerto Rican. We had too. Empire before. Tarazi, we love y'all, but we had the movie Empire before. Me, Joey Crack, John Leguizamo. We got a whole <laughs> list. We had the movie. I was Cheddar Cheddar. I had the biggest speakers in the project in my apartment. You feel me? No bullshit. The drug <laughs> gang. I was after you. Joey Crack had a scene where this motherfucker. That was really when you was Fat Joe for real. You skinny Joe now. You still a don. But I'm digging all really over for the yo, shotgun. Yo, he was too big to get off the couch, people. Look at the movie Empire. He hit a button on the couch. He was about to blast him. A uh, AK Pearl, he came over the top of the back on the spring, and he catch it and almost took us down. Tell that, tell that. Nah, that, that, oof, that was oof. an amazing thing. My lifestyle on the set of that movie in the trailer. That yeah. movie influenced me to go, y'all want to live my lifestyle. That shit was crazy. I go, Tretch, I go back to Juice. You and Pac said, y'all were friends before even Juice. He got you in Juice. Uh, yeah. Was your, I think you had an all rap. You see that? Look at them. Look at them albums up there. See that? See that? See that four million up there? See that pop plaque? You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your brother, and and what was that relationship yeah. like? Because I feel like you you had the tightest relationship with Pac out of any other rapper. I mean, what was that like having having that brotherhood with Pac? I mean, we was like kindred spirits. Like, whenever we go somewhere, even when it was out of town, we get our per diem. <laughs> That's our little check for the day, for the week, and we go straight to the hood. You feel what I'm saying? And we, and we go, and they go, oh, shit. And they knew Pac before me because he had same song with Digital Underground. And, you know, like, this was before Bridges Got a Baby Anything, but they knew him from same song and, and Digital. So every time we go in the hood, it was like, Oh my God! Boom, 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 and then 
it was like when OPP came out and we got off the road and then he ca it was we shot Kim and Atrium. Atrium was a uh, digital underground manager and shot Kim from Flavion. They said, keep these two niggas apart. <laughs> these two niggas together and the Henny combined is charges and a gang of money to get keep them two niggas apart. Because it was like, it was good fun though, you know? We was yep, snatching right. up all the CDs and cassettes from, from, from the black marketers and all. You know, we was just wild and doing our young I used to see Pac beat up the bootleggers. Yes, we was after the bootleggers. I seen a motherfucker trying to hit him with a sword and Pac took the sword. An African dude had a sword and Pac took the sword off the motherfucker and start chasing him like, yo, I my experience with him is every time I must have met Pac after he was gone. Like he was a, he was on some violent shit. Cause every time I seen him, he was on some shit. Like it was violence. Mm -hmm. He was getting it popping mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. Uh but you being from Jersey, uh um, and then him falling into all that beef with Big. Was it awkward for you that everybody knew you were so tight with Pac? You know what I'm saying? Or did you ever? Yeah, and I was on. Yeah, yeah, and I was on the East Coast, but I had I had Borough Bandits. I had I had a gang of Brooklyn Brooklyn heads, and they already knew Pac introduced me to Big, so Big became my brother as soon as Pac introduced me to him. So my whole thing when anything Pac and I'm looking to the point like I can't wait to get these two niggas to sit down because once I talk to both, I've been talking to them separately. When I get them both down, it's going to be gravy. And then, you know, Pac Hardhead, then a motherfucker, ah, 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 ah. and then I said, okay, we're going to see what's going on. I said, yo, you know, I got this paper and stuff. Naughty, uh, they got this bad boy, Naughty tour going on. You know, he's like, man, you better go on that tour. Get that money, tell them niggas we gonna make better records than them bad boy ass niggas, them glitter went and do and we gonna do this and go with and it was yo, facts. As C's, as Ken. We was on a bad boy tour. Like after Bad Boy Naughty Tour, after we going out for a couple of dates, I'm like, yo, why y'all ain't going to the after parties and shit with us? He's like, man, you know death row tripping, they might got people out, niggas look. I'm like, what? I'm like, man, I mean, y'all better come out and get go. Yo, the next up they was wearing naughty boxers and, and naughty gear and all that going to every party with us, yo. We was like, man, it ain't no beef, yo. Make records, y'all make records, yo. It's gonna do everybody gonna get money. You feel what I'm saying? And it was like that. They never had a chance to really sit down, kick it, and really bring it to the world like that. You yeah, feel what I'm you, saying? Yeah. I was there uh at the garden when Big Daddy Kane was performing. And they walked up, mm -hmm. Pac and Big coming together. I'm in the crowd. Flojo was out. And Pac mm -hmm. and Big turned around. They're like, yo, crack, come on. So I go behind stage with them. We go upstage. Mm -hmm. That's when they do the infamous. I got seven Mac 11s, about eight, 38, 38. Mac -11s. I'm standing right there with them. It never ends. And then yeah. Pac is like, yeah. all my niggas in the pen, and we go again. And not separate nuts from a Mac 10. I'm standing on there. Uh, the, shade, the, the stage had to be rocking like an a, a, a earthquake. Nah, because he came what? in. Because the way they came in was Pac came in, mm -hmm. not Pac. It was Bishop. And, and mm -hmm. he walked in there with Bishop. He walked in through the back of the crowd, and all you seen, every, that juice was... That shit was so big. And he that was like Tony Montana walking in. He walked in and, and you know he loved that attention and the whole crowd is like, ah, oh, from the so, back. And he got big with him. Oh. They come pull me up, like throw me the life from preserver. Like, yo, crack, come on. So I go with him. Please. And it's oh, everybody's mm. like, and he walking in like, like uh above the rim, <laughs> pot standing on the sideline, nigga. Like he up in there like, huh? Like Birdie, like Birdie, Birdie from above the rim. <laughs> like Birdie, like, and then they went up in there and they rocked. And I never understood how it really went sour because I know Biggie fucked with them and Pop fucked with them. I was there with them. And then it went sour. 
But I take it that you was trying to like fix it behind the scenes. You just never got your chance to definitely to close the definitely. deal. Definitely, definitely, man. Biggie was my nigga. You feel what I'm saying, man? Pockets like we came up and we 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 came from nothing. We 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 rich now. We out here and thing was I'm already you knowing hip hop was built off of battling. So it I, it wasn't gonna be no I knew it was gonna be a problem when I seen Bob magazine and I seen Puff and Big on the cover and it said East versus West. I said, Oh fuck. Nigga, this telling a nigga on the East Coast don't fuck with the West Coast. Everybody on the West Coast don't fuck with the East Coast, and all of us traveling East to West to get this money. I said this shit is not going to end off well. Then I started seeing Biggie promoting out. I'm going back back to Cali, and he shot the video. He went out. I was like, I got chills. Get get my nigga up. And it was, it was fight. Everybody. The Afro. So don't try me. Yo, I'm insane. I see the hole in your toe. I make a jump like the house of pain. Bang, biggie, bang, biggie, bang, bang. Niggas, bang, bang, niggas, bang, bang. Oh, bang, biggie, bang, biggie, bang, bang. Motherfucker, niggas, bang, bang. So, yo, Trey. You were on that stage, nigga. I was on that I know your stage knees needed braces. And Big Daddy came right after that, said, Fat Joe, sorry, we ain't got no more time. <laughs> I never. <laughs> yo, it was like an inflate. You inflated, I, right? Like, oh, I my never God, you knew what you were about to do. I don't know how I never heard the snippet with, with Tupac going, so Fat Joe, of my man. Like, that, nah, that shit don't exist. We got to investigate that. Bad. Somebody deleted some shit. We going to do they some negotiations. And we then gonna I find the fuck out. Big Daddy came to the wall and uh, with Nori. I got Nori on drink caps to ask him, yo, did you front up Fat Joe? He said, yes, I front it up Fat Joe. <laughs> what, 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 what? What, 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 what? Yo, Nore, you know your man, Big Daddy Kane, man, living legend, man. I love him so much, man. Uh, yo, Tretch, man, you yeah. was, um, man, you got me fucked up because we went into that, to that. Biggie, oh, we was talking about, 
uh, going back to Cali when, when when Biggie was doing the going back. Yeah, to yeah, I'm known. It's like it's just Cali is a different beast. You feel me? And it's like they took Pac loss. Like you know, what I mean, it was it was it was just way too early to just go back promoting the new album. Ain't nobody would have looked at nobody like suckers or anything, but it's it's like it's it's just real life, you know. And it was just me. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Happened to me. I'm on 125th Street. Right, this is how it all happened to me. I'm on 125th Street, and you know, I tell Sha Shaheem Reed here, Shaheem Reed, jur journalist to the stars. They was shout out to God. Shout out to God. He Trish. told me, yo, Tretch, one of my favorite rappers ever. No. I said, Tretch. So me, I was the Shaheem up before Shaheem. Like, I would be in every jam. You used to see me before I even was rapping. I'd be everywhere. So I'm in the state building. But I'm on already. But Biggie, he got the blue polo shirt on us in the summer. And he got the junior mafia up there. And they doing the... um. They 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 up there rub your titties as you love Big Pop, mm. right? They doing they doing all that shit, mm. and it's grand pack, and I'm watching, and out of nowhere, one dude comes walking past me in Harlem. You see, everything for me, God does everything. Just a hip hop fan for, he had a boom box, mm. and he was playing. That's why I fucked your bitch, you fat mother. I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh and, no. And he walks by with the box. Oh, and nah. I'm looking at Biggie. Total, total. No, no, no. This is a joke for a moment for real. I'm looking at Biggie and Junior Mafia on stage. And they're not hearing what I heard this guy just play. Diddy bopping through Harlem. And that's when I knew it was going to be a new day. It's going to be a war out here because it wasn't just East Coast, West Coast. I seen the motherfucking Harlem with a boom box. Walk right past me while Biggie's on stage playing that shit. And I was just looking, and it was for me, it was like, holy shit. And like, trust, trust. Anybody that wasn't fucking with Pac was bumping big shit in front of Pac or around or somewhere trying. You feel what I'm yeah, saying? All that you, yeah. It was it was double sided. You feel what I'm saying? I was with him when he was doing like Pac was going through so much, you gotta realize. When he came from above the rim, he was fresh out of jail. He still had his motherfucking makeup scar on and shit. And while we on the set, because as soon as he get out of jail, I'm, I'm mobbing with him. This a whole different movie, yeah, thing. But whenever he on the East and whenever I'm on the West, he got me. So we rolling. And you see him motherfuckers in the winter. Ah, ha, you little rapist. That's why they caught you. Ah, ha. You feel what I'm saying? And he got to go film do this shit and all the rest of this. So I'm imagining on, on Biggie's side, when he got to go work and all this, he got to hear all Pac lovers and riders, you know, so it was have, it was a time that was, yeah. Happened, right? I never believed it for one second about Pac rape, 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 raping the girl. I never believed it for one second. Um, I um, just never know. I never understood how you could rape somebody that you was, you was fucking with. Yeah. Like that. So you understand? So when when you yes, know a picture of the girl like weeks before sitting next to him with dude mm. like they like they knew each other. Like, did mm. you ever see that picture? Mm. Like the girl who accused him of rape. We know, we know all yeah. We we know all all situations like you feel what I'm saying, but you still could go to jail for that. You feel me? Not even investigating like something don't sound right. Yeah, so that's you just it. go to jail. You know how that he on hit with the, He got hit with the OJ Simpson. Hmm. That uh, they were mad at him for everything he was doing, what he was standing for. He shot the cops in Atlanta. They jammed was after him. He's a baby they black. They jammed him up for a book of matches left open. They was gonna give him ten years for anything smoking like OJ. OJ went back. To get his own shit. And they OG took him down for that. Back. They stole his shit. They were selling his shit. That part. He went back to get his own shit. It got like 36 years for going to get back his own memorabilia. You know, you, so you, you, like, you going and, down for, for jacking your own shit back. Yeah, and so they hit him up for the first case he beat. 
So like with Pac shooting cops and shit, they it was a people, rap like a doobie. It was a rap like a doobie. And you're a baby Black Panther. You feel me? Oh, and, we, yeah. and we and we still looking for your Aunt Chessa Mark. Yeah, he was still a fugitive. He's still a fugitive in Jersey for shooting the New Jersey State Trooper. She's still on the run in Cuba. You feel me? Dun, 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 breaking news. Yeah, that's crazy, Trutch, man. Uh, so I say, I watch all these rappers, right? Eminem. Let's just go Eminem. That's Eminem. my light-skinned twin. He says, he said <laughs> light-skinned twin. He said, you're his favorite rapper. What does that feel like when you got somebody so lyrical, a goat like Eminem, saying you're his favorite rapper? I mean, it, it makes me feel like I did my job. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm, I'm anybody that I admire. All the fans and the millions of records and, and the tours worldwide and everything. A show like we did something. So when you hear it from that caliber, it just humbles you. You know what I mean? We kick it back and forth. Eminem for his birthday, my birthdays, we be kicking in it. So it's like, it's a, it's a, a mutual respect. You feel me? Because he's one of the dopest of all times, hands mm. down. You, you feel what I'm saying? And it's, it's showing how, how the culture is so great. It expands from, it, it brings everybody together. All races, hip hop brings everybody together. Different art forms of all, whether it's dance, hip hop, graffiti, it's all types of, man, it's just, it's, it's a lovely thing. So that's my bro, bro. I love him. And it, it's like me. Anytime anybody asks me about hip hop, I can't go without naming all those that came before me. Cause I'm a I'm a product of all of them together. Mm. That's good shit. And um and uh that's crazy, man. When when I when I see shit like that, Eminem publicly saying, you know, Trex is his favorite. And and not just him, so many people just, you know, you on a they they top five, top ten list with millions of rappers that came out. It says it says a lot. And and your touring Definitely situation you know i know covid is crazy but y'all guys do more shows than pretty much anybody in the business yeah we was we was tearing them down but you know we it's it's good we we handle our business correctly and do it and when we come back on that we we gonna tear them up so you know with anything hip-hop we 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 diverse we switch hustles so now it's like you know we doing the films and plus, you know, it's good to be writers on, on, them, on the mega hits because publishing, you know, you always get your dough. You feel me? You always get your <laughs> bags on their ass. Yo, Trish, I doing. see you all the time when I'm in Jersey. Yeah. I, I, I see you walking like... I see yeah. you... I see you walking... Um, Miles. By yourself all the time. Miles. Like, and I'll be, I'm, I'm going, and I'm like, yo, trash. And you turn around, you won't know it's even me. Yeah, we'll I'm, throw it up, yeah. You like being by yourself, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, certain certain, certain times, you know, I'm going to do my dirt all by my lonely type always. But I always was a walk in Ill Town, East Orange. It was like we had to walk like like two two miles to school, junior high school, from down the hill to up the hill. You feel me? From the high school and anything else. So it was always mobbing, and it was like, Everything else, it was like, I ain't had no cars as a little nigga, you feel me? And when we was making money in a hustle game, I wasn't going to get no car because I was immediate feds on that ass. <laughs> you feel me? The block is hot. So Yo. up the hill and down the hill, I was a walker, a mobber. I was a loner, you feel me? And always was in different groups, but was from down the hill. And we was like, you know, East Orange is so small, up the hill and down the hill. We all combined on a hip hop tip, and and it was just we 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 do it like that. But yeah, I'm a lonely. You gonna see me ma get them uh, twenty thousand steps in a day. You know, uh, your man, our man. You know, rest in peace, Apache. Apache, you see the tat right there. He always had my back. He got me signed to the Flavor Unit, Apache. I need a gangster, babe. Gangster, gangster. I need a. My but first yeah. Time see him and Coogee rap. He was such a good dude, man. Uh, so so you and you and Apache was friends before you was even on, right? 
Yeah, man. We was going to the parties. We was hitting the train. We was coming from Jersey City, from Illtown, meeting up, going to the city, going to all the uh, uh, the ROM Fest, the battles, everything, all the underground shits we was at, the building, the tunnel. Man, we was at everything that was moving. That was well, that was our hip hop, you know what I mean? Our, our, our learning stage, you know? You know, he was a great guy, man. I remember just doing my, um, I was selling Shaheem on the way over here. I was playing Diamond D, uh, what was it, Psych Psychotic Renata, Stunt Bloods and Hip Hop. People don't know my claim to fame is I did every ad lib on Diamond D's classic album. So I'm <laughs> for this, I'm in the back. So I'm showing <laughs> the car, like, look, look, I'm on the ad libs. Look, look, look. And then I was telling them about, you know, when I came up and, and, and speaking to you, you know, it was big for Apache to be have the biggest number one record in the country for him to come to the Bronx and to do a song with me on my first album when people mm. ain't know me out there like that. Him and G Rap. Oh, uh, that meant a lot to me, man. So I'll never forget Apache, man. Shout out yeah. to him, family, everybody. Rest in peace. No doubt. Flavor unit for life. I hear that. Let me get one one last question, Tretch. Without that joke, who's on Tretch's top five MCs dead or alive of all time? I mean, it's such it's such a disrespectful question to me, like five or ten. When I'm from the era when it's like fifty and I go back from Melly Mel, you feel me, to Cool Mo D, to LL, to Slick mm. Rick. You feel mm. what I'm saying? Uh, to stats of Sonic MCs. Mm. You know what I mean? Phyllis 4, Cold mm. Crush, Crash Crew. You got, mm. about, you got about 50 MCs right there. Now, shall I go to the 90s? You go to the 90s. How, all right. Well, how many homies you ever heard me diss from the 90s? I don't know. Well, we, well guess what? We cool now. <laughs> but, yo, homie, man, I'm a hip-hop lover. You feel me? I love lyrics. I love dope. I ain't never hated on nobody for doing this. Or I'm like, yo, I, got, I had everybody albums. I, I go to the show in the back, and and while the artist might be looking for security, but throw me off stage because they don't know it's me. But I'm loudest one back there singing all they shit. Singing all they shit. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I love hip hop. The young cats that's out now, yo, man, I hear so much shit that I'm singing and rocking to. And they got a whole different tongue and twang than the nineties, the two thousands, the you and it's beautiful. They, I'm, like, I'm I'm like they be souping me up to going right. And I'm always writing, you feel me? But hip hop is glorious. It's like they always said, like I, I could hear from the seventies, it's only got five more years left and look at it, fifty years later. Ooh. And they and they and special before you get off, your special relationship with the new kids on the block. Cause it seemed yeah. like you got the hookup. Like every time them dudes oh, do a reunion, Naughty yeah. by Nature's on tour with them, yeah. one thousand shows straight. Yeah, uh, we we just had like the biggest. That like, yo, we just had like the biggest selling tour last year before the pandemic, and it was Naughty by Nature, New Kids, Saw and Pepper, Tiffany, Debbie Gibson. Yo, we was all man did it, did it live nation style and all. It's like it's beautiful, right? Like, like I said, we're fans, and we see so many artists, superstars that's fans as well. You know what I mean? I ain't got no problem be standing on the side of Fat Joe. So in Detroit, I was back there loud as hell. Security was going to throw it out till they knew it was, it was me. Church, it's different. It's different, Church, because we're brothers, and I love you. And besides just hip hop, I love you who you is as a man. And as, back it's not too, many, not too many men. In this game, like I'm, uh, now nah, I'm dead ass serious. Like it's, we like your music, you cool, you know, you the real deal. Like that is 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 different. You know what I'm saying? So when I speak to you, like I ain't know you ain't got an Instagram. I'm yeah, hitting. Yeah. I said, like, why he dissing me? Did I ever disrespect Church? I'm looking for you all over. I'm like, that's my fucking brother. Like I gotta get him yeah. on the show. Like I ain't and, been, like, I ain't been on years. But you, you already know. You know my people. You know how to track, track down. So when I'm here, shy, and then I had uh, NJ Soup, 
one five. That's an NJ suit. I'm I'm almost fifty years old. I'm gonna invite you to the party if they don't shut down because of COVID. And you know it's gonna be all very 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 well done and, and done the right way. But if they don't close us down, man, you know I'm coming. I love you. I turned fifty and I'm looking better than ever, my brother. Yo, man, we feel doing great. Black, black don't crack unless you on crack. Ah oh, shit! Yo, just talk that shit, baby. Talk that shit, baby. <laughs> I love you, my brother, too much. Yo, Holy yo, just want to shout out one thing before I leave, yo. Equal standards, the movie.com. We done that, man. Like everything that I just wanted to shout that out real quick. Taheem, you receiving producer of the award, excellence, all of that. And for this party, I'm giving this 50th in Jersey on the 6th. Go to NJ Soup 153. NJ Soup 153. That's the big promoter over there doing that, man. Chain remains for all my homies locked down. You already know, nephew. I see you out there, Deja. R.P. Rio that went. Get well soon, Biz Marky. And Fat Joe, we got to do this song, dogs. We talked about it. And we got to do, do this. Make I love you, bro. I love you. Bro. I you, I love you. I love Real you facts. Too much. Facts. Love you, man. Love you, I bro. Love you. I stretch. Peace, my brother. <laughs> Woo! You don't know who I know. That's not that simple, no. You don't need it. Trust me. You don't need it. <laughs> I definitely don't. How you doing, Vina? How you been? I'm good. I'm really good. I'm happy. Can't um, complain. You know, for those who don't know, I got to say it, right? I know you're an artist and you and you work hard for everything you've done <laughs> and and you're moving up. But we got to We got to shout out your father, DJ Kid Capri. Of course. All hey, right. I, you <laughs> have to because I have to. Right? It's all good. So, so good. That's my guy. I know Capri since day, day, day one. And when I heard, I heard you by yourself. Not didn't mm -hmm. I have no clue you was Kid Capri's daughter. And when I heard you, I was like, yo, this girl is fucking dope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, I asked Capri and Capri was like, yeah, you know, she do her own thing. You know, she doing her own thing. And, mm -hmm. um, how do you like the way it's been, it's been playing out for you so far? I honestly can't complain, not even a little bit. <laughs> um, I'm my own businesswoman now. I own my own label. Um, I signed, I went into a partnership with Cinematic, Johnny Shipes, Abby B. Um, I hired Christy as my manager, so shout out to that. And um, yeah, I'm really in a good place. I own my masters. I'm preparing to release my first album. Um, and I just released my first single with the label, so I'm I'm really really excited. I saw the video; it's very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to say something like, "We got to talk about the video." 
<laughs> I thought the video is very sexy. Yeah, I'm getting older, Uncle Joe. I'm getting older. No, but your father's so overprotective. <laughs> you come on, and I'm like, oh my God. And my daughter's 14, and it's five, six years from now. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. Um, but you deserve it. I think it. I did well. It's your career. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it is, man. But uh, what's that like putting out your first video, uh, getting your first project together? Because it's been all this has been steps to where you yeah. going to right now. What what what's it like putting out your first video, your first single? Um, I mean, what, like we've been doing this for so long. Like before we even started talking to labels and stuff. Like we've just been doing this, preparing me for when the time was ready. So like to go and shoot my video now with the label and they're used to seeing artists and having to develop them, but then they come into my video and I'm already on my P's and Q's. I know what I'm doing. I'm doing my hair, my makeup. I know my angles. I know my moves, like really being prepared. And then the editing process comes and I'm extremely hands on with that. The marketing process comes. I'm extremely hands on with that. So being... I won't say her name, right? I did a song one time with a with with a girl, uh, mm -hmm. an artist, and the song was incredible. And when I got to the video, she was like so shy. She wasn't like the song. Yeah. And you know, I had to be like, yo, go for yours. Or, you know, like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, like right. and then I knew with no disrespect when I left that video, I was like, yo, this girl really ain't gonna be it. Like, mm -hmm. hearing the song, I was like, oh, shit. And yeah. you saying, you bought that action. As soon as camera yes. come on, you know <laughs> what the fuck you doing, and you yes. going for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like, why waste the chance? Like, if you got the opportunity to show out and show what you've been working with, why not go crazy? Like, and I feel like everybody, and I mean this in my most humblest tone, I feel like everybody's not a star. Like, some people are really creative, and they can help the stars, but everybody just got to learn their lane. And that's where it comes into like, you know, figure out who you are and what you're capable of and all those things. But me, I'm going to perform. I'm going to give a show. And we're going to have fun, always. Uh, so you going for it? Going for it. Like all the way? Yep, absolutely. Man, <laughs> I get it. I, I get your talk. I hear your talk and all that. Everybody ain't a star. <laughs> And it ain't for everybody. Um, sometimes it's a it's a faster uh, voyage for certain artists, and sometimes it takes time. It took me three albums, plus three albums before I got to like big. Right. And um, and, and you just saying, "Yo, I'm gonna fight till I catch it." Yep. I mean, like I didn't put so many years into it. I didn't left school twice. I didn't completely rearrange my life for my career. So in my mind, I don't really have a choice. Like, it got to work. So it's going to work. <laughs> you know, it's going to work. That's what happened to me when I left the streets and I got into music. Mm -hmm. It was no choice. I had no choice. I was like, this shit got to work. Mm -hmm. like, you know, all my friends went to jail. You know, different circumstances. But I was like, right. yo, Right here, <laughs> this shit gotta work. So yep. I don't know if people, you know, I got a famous story with my sister Angie Martinez. She says when she met me, she was like, yo, you came up in here talking about, yo, you're gonna be the biggest, you're gonna be, and she was looking at me and she Puerto Rican too. She like, damn, yeah, right. Ain't no Spanish niggas. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and it's always a funny story we tell each other, but I think that's the mentality you got to have in order to win. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. this is it. I got no choice. I got to I gotta win from here. Yeah. And um, exactly. when is the project coming out? The whole project. Yo, cool. What's up, my brother? Damn. So, huh? I'm trying to... I, I want to release the album spring of next year. Mm. Right now, I'm just getting all my singles and everything out. Um, but I, I actually signed, I want to say, like, late June, early July. And from the moment they signed me, I was in the studio. Like, all right, what are we waiting for? Like, I don't want to wait to announce it. Like, I want to get all my songs in now. So I have a lot of music recorded right now. So we just picking <laughs> stuff up. 
and really trying to figure out what direction we want to go in. I know you had dinner the other night with Angelica Villa. Yeah, she took me on a date, y'all. <laughs> I mean, that's cool, man, because you're a decent girl. She's a very decent girl. It's cool to be friends like that. You know, you know th yeah. this industry got to turn you into something you ain't, you know. And mm -hmm. then, and then uh, you know, there's some girls that, you know, they want to, you know, they want to do certain things that maybe mm -hmm. you and Angelica don't want to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's cool to fuck <laughs> like a yes. but Nah, it's real talk mm -hmm. because it's I real have talk, meetings. For real. I have meetings with, you know, for those who don't know, Angelica Villa is my artist. She sings very beautiful. Her album came out. Um, and is Deception, uh, season one. And it's like, you know, I've had meetings with record execs where they mm -hmm. were like, yo, you she don't fuck with the pop and rapper, it ain't gonna happen. And she don't and and it's mm -hmm. almost like courage for, you know what I'm saying, girls women, young women to act right. a certain way when you get mm -hmm. in this business. Have you ever felt that kind of like thrown at um, you? That, that... I never felt I don't want to well, call yeah. it pressure. General is difficult if you're not following the pack. If you're not following what everybody else doing, you really doing your own thing. It is difficult. For me, um, to not face that, to not face that pressure of like, you have to date this kind of man or you have to dress this kind of way. I decided to be my own boss. Like, all right, if mm -hmm. I'm running it, you can't tell me how I got to dress. You can't tell me how I got to come off. Like, as long as I get my supporters to like what I do and support what I do, you have to follow it. You can't run away from what's already working. So that was my, my, my mentality. But yes, you definitely still get the oh, you got to date this person and you have to look like this and sex sells. And yeah, that may be true, but you could do it a certain kind of way. Sexy and classy is a thing. It's always been a thing. I got up one time and 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 I'm not saying, let, let me be clear, because she signed the, um, my label in Rock Nation. This isn't even a Rock Nation. This is me and dudes talking. Like me mm -hmm. and dudes. And they saying, Yo, if she ain't fucking a hot rapper, if she ain't this, so they saying the dude shit. And I said, I got up and screamed at dudes, and I was like, yo, what the fuck you want me to do? She ain't a hoe. She's yeah, not a hoe. Real shit. She's not gonna get <laughs> up like that. Yeah. Like, what y'all want me to do? She don't get down like that. Mm -hmm. And it's not true. It's not true because I've made it to where I am, and I have not dealt with no rappers. I haven't dealt with. I don't indulge in things like that. And that's just my choice. I'm not saying, like, I'm not in tune with my sexuality or anything up, like that. But your father being famous and you've been around this and you yeah. know how men move famous yeah. guys is because yeah. of that? Yes, absolutely. Because why you when Dave East looks at you and, you know, and he's like, oh. <sighs> We're not doing that. <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> We're not doing that. And then it's, it also goes into, like, as a woman, approach me properly. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm into stuff like that. Like, the respect got to be there off rip. Like, you can't just slide in my DMs and I'm like, oh, yeah, hey. Like, nah. The approach got to be different. You got to court hey. me a certain kind of way. And uh, you can't be sliding girls there. Not, not all of them yeah, like no. Like, nah. I'm yeah. <laughs> that ain't it. I'd be damned if my mother be like, oh, so how you met him? Oh, he slid in my DMs. She's gonna be like, what? <laughs> I know your mother. Your mother, she wasn't born yesterday. So a lot of you guys, you know, y'all think y'all know what's up. We don't know what's up. We know what's up. So like, yeah, I know. know what's <laughs> up. She might yeah. know the actual technology, but she knows yeah, they she know. the DMs. Yep. What's the name of the single? What's the name of the project? So we can have everybody looking out for it. Okay. Uh, first, I'm gonna start. The name of my label is Amore Love Records, which is my last, my middle name, and my last name. My dad didn't have any sons, so I had to name the label without a last name, just so we could keep some, like you know, generation going on. Um, the name of the single is Oh Me, and the name of my project is Love Talk. Love Talk. Oh yeah. Yo, listen. Yeah. I'm watching you. I'm always gonna support you one million percent. Not Thank only. You.
am I going to support, but I'm a fan. And I'm so glad that I, I, I discovered you before I even knew you was your father's daughter. That way, because mm -hmm. that's Kit Capri's daughter, it's because you're mm -hmm. talented and you can Thank sing you. and you fire. You know what I'm saying? It's so crazy. So I remember you had said to me, I opened up for um, you and p and Rock at, at like a college or something like that a couple years ago. And I was in a group and you was like, yo, this is not going to work. You got to be by yourself. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, okay. You wanted to do all the songs with. You mm -hmm. had a friend you wanted to do the songs with. And they was like, yo, yeah. they I told your father behind your back. Yo, homie got to go, man. We <laughs> behind so your back. I was like, yo. And the next year it happened. Oh, boy. He was like, I don't get involved with that. <laughs> it is what it is. I told mm -hmm. your mother. I was like, oh, mama. <laughs> what though? Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it, you was right though. You was right. The next year it, it happened, so you was right. It has mm -hmm. to be done. Sometimes you got to do what's best for you. Maybe you circle exactly. around in, in the future or something. You might be mm -hmm. like, "Yo, mate, no, I'm good. Hey, oh, I'm good." I'm good. You know, what I'm <laughs> I'll tell the story. I I had a girlfriend when I was like 16, and she was super fly, but I'd never seen her again. And maybe she ain't looking so good like she used to be back in the day. So I ain't really like, I, I'm good. I ain't got the, you right. know? That's like, peace to the gods. Listen, mm -hmm. come on here whenever you want, when you got a new song, when you're dropping the project. Of course. Know, this is the biggest show in the game, okay? Yeah, I know. God bless. Be good, Vina. God bless. Thank you so much, Uncle Joe. Uh, I don't know who's coming. But it's always the biggest people in the game. There's nothing you can do about this. You don't know who I know. It might be Obama want to talk about homeboy. I don't know. But it's always the biggest. And you know it. <laughs> Fire signs. <laughs> they fucking love it. Yo, cool. They love this shit. They love when I talk that shit. This shit ain't a game every day, bro. Every day. Unbelievable. Trigger, treach, naughty by nature. Being a lot. What do you want me to do? This keeps being the biggest people in the game. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? You don't know who I know. See you the ball. Peace. Put God first. Be the love, nothing but love, baby. I see you, baby. All right, peace, y'all.